Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to episode 2 of Incredibly Weird Toys where we take a deep dive into a particular decade to uncover some of the weirdest toys out there. Of course we will continue with our 80s theme and I think that I got a few good ones on here today. So as with the previous episode we only have a few spots so if you can think of any more super weird 80s toys let me know in the comments down below and you may just see them in the next video. And I really enjoyed reading your comments comments from the previous Weird Toys episode, many of you shared some weird stuff you received when you were younger, and some of those had me laughing so hard. <laughs> so without further ado, here we go. Number six skateboard smack ups. Now I couldn't find a commercial for these guys, but I'm sure it would have gone a little something like this. <laughs> Skateboard smackups were a very controversial series of plastic figures featuring children on skateboards released in 1986 by Playtime Products, which was a company later acquired by Tyco in 1991. As with many toy lines of the 80s, gross or gross out was a very prevalent theme. It was made hugely popular by the trading card company Topps, who took a chance on releasing these gross cards called Garbage Pail Kids featuring kids being disgusting, and they soared to popularity. Kids Kids couldn't get enough of them, and other companies wanted to cash in on that gross fad. Then someone at Playtime Products had the brilliant idea of creating a series of figures featuring children on skateboards being violently maimed by everyday dangerous obstacles on the road. Twelve figures were released in total featuring such zany and wacky characters like Amy Ashfault, who is burning alive after being covered in tar. She kind of looks like Christopher Walken from Batman Returns. Timmy Tire Track, who is actually being cut into two while being run over. Oh, that Timmy. Patty Plate Glass, who smashed through a window and is now covered in glass shards and gashes. Wally Wall Banger, who actually looks like he is dead. And you can't forget Tammy Tailpipe, oh, what a hoot, who has been impaled through her throat by a muffler while being filled with exhaust. All of these children should be dead. Dead. The disturbing thing about these figures is that every day there are scores of children taken to the emergency for skateboard related injuries and sadly some of them end up paying the ultimate price from being run over by vehicles, crashing into obstacles, or trauma from a bad fall. The skateboard smackups line obviously outraged parents and were banned by many different advocate groups and were even banned within Australia by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. There is also a super rare ad onto this line called Manny Manhole, which is a larger battery operated figure that was not thought to have been produced, but it seemingly was via a small trial run basis. So if there's any collectors out there, be on the lookout for Manny and his manhole because he's big bucks. And number five, Inhumanoids. The evil that lies The Inhumanoids was both a Hasbro toy line and an animated series that ran for a total of 13 episodes between September and December of 1986. Inhumanoids follows the story of Earth Core, a scientist hero group who battles a group of terrifying subterranean monsters called the Inhumanoids, with the aid of elemental beings called the Mutors. Turns out a race of sentient redwood trees sealed away the evil Inhumanoids tendril and decomposed years ago, but have just now been unearthed and unleashed, but their leader Metlar is still trapped below. You can't escape Metlar! The unusual cartoon proved to be brow raising due to its gory like content, visually agonizing deaths by such means as corrosive acid and monstrous amputations. There was just something about post nuclear like humanoid monsters that didn't quite sit well with parents. I'm pretty sure this cartoon really freaked out a lot of kids. I'm one Not surprisingly, the cartoon lasted for only one season, but kids could still relive the glory days, oh no sorry I mean the gory days with friends like Decompose, a rotting corpse with an exposed ribcage, Tendril, whose initial release sported long fangs, which had to be shortened later due to safety reasons, and of course Metlar. 
a living nightmare. Let's be honest, the premise of this show and the toys are pretty wicked, but to some little kids, eh, it's just plain terrifying. Number four, Rude Ralph. That was totally disgusting. Thanks. From Axlon, Rude Ralph. Okay, this guy looks like a saint compared to humanoids, but don't be fooled, he's very rude. Rude Ralph was released in 1986 by Axlon, the same makers of the band Breath Blasters, which sprayed a unique foul-smelling scents that were later tested to be toxic. Ralph is a large, ball-sized head painted to look like something out of a horror movie, but to me he looks like a giant booger that just picked up too many things off the floor. He is modeled after the madball craze in the mid-80s, but Ralph has a secret weapon. I brought him to school today. <laughs> A retractable eyeball which could be pulled to reveal four unique gross sounds like burps, puking, farts, and gagging. A 1986 toy report labeled 1986 the year of the ugly toy, claiming that most toys were not just ugly, they were disgusting, sickening, bizarre, unpleasant, and offensive, even dubbing Rude Ralph as a wretched toy. Number 3. Barnyard Commandos. The pigs have their own secret weapon, the Porcupult, able to launch supports into battle. Barnyard Commandos! From Playmates! Barnyard Commandos was a series of non-posable, soft, hollow plastic toy pigs and sheep with military armaments released by Playmates in 1988. After eating some radioactive material left over from a military experiment, the now anthropomorphic mutant pigs and sheep are at war with one another. The RAMS, which stands for Rebel Army of Military Sheep, fight against the Porks, or Platoon of Rebel Killer Swine. Two series of Barnyard Commandos were produced, each including several figures from both teams, featuring such characters as Commodore Fleece Cardigan, Private Side O Bacon, General Hamfat Lardo, and Commander Missiles Mutton Chop. A 13 episode French American animated series was based on the figures the following year. We're left with no choice. This calls for war! However, the series was not successful enough to merit further production of episodes, and neither was the toy line, as kids had other more appealing options at the toy store, causing this odd toy line to not do so well. Number 2 The Dune Sandworm. Yeah, man, what kind of weird toy list would this be without some sort of odd phallic shaped toy? Well, here it is The Sandworm from Dune. Dune was a 1965 science fiction novel which later came to the big screen in 1984. The year is 10,191, and a spice called melange is the most valuable substance known to the universe, essential for space travel, and has the ability to extend life. But its only source is located on the desert planet Arrakis also known as Dune. But warfare is inevitable between two houses as both dispute who should rightfully control the precious source. Universal Pictures thought this would be the next Star Wars. It was gonna be big. $45 million went into this movie's budget, bed sheets were made in anticipation, coloring books, view masters, party favors, decorations, a toy line, the list goes on and on. But Dune was a huge flop, grossing just under $31 million at the box office, making it one of the biggest box office disasters. Some people dug this movie, and some really didn't. General consensus being quite negative, that you know there was too much information to remember, the plot was too easy to guess, irritating whispering from hearing characters' thoughts inside their heads. What's wrong with Gurney? He's not making this. And to top it all off, the film had a director slash screenplay writer with no knowledge of the book and no real interest in science fiction, making it a poor adaptation of the book. Even though this movie was not particularly kid-friendly, tons of different Dune merchandise was created, including a toy line by LJN. Vehicles, guns, and five and a half inch tall figures with battle-matic action were included in the hugely unsuccessful toy line. But the best thing to come out of this line was you guessed it, the 18 inch long black posable sandworm, which yes, looks like a dingling with a terrifying end piece. You could bend and twist this guy all day long, but it was a real shame he was not scaled to the rest of the figures in the line. Because this line was so unsuccessful, only one series of toys was released, and even that line was released in a limited quantity, making this line quite appealing to collectors. And number one, the God Jesus Robot. <laughs> Please kill me. 
Ah, uh, the god Jesus robot, the world's most sacrilegious AI on three wheels. This contraption was created by Bandai in 1984 and sold exclusively in Japan as Yurane Robo, or better known as the God Jesus Robot to the rest of the world. God Jesus is a robot fortune teller who requires just two AA batteries to channel the Holy Spirit and have the power of God and Jesus within him to tell the future. Essentially, he's like a magic eight ball, but without the maybes, he can answer your question with a yes or a no. Wait, Wally who? <sighs> He comes with a sticker pack, a fortune telling book, and a large white crucifix. Perfect for all your exorcisms and vampire hunts. In this picture here, it looks like a guy wondering, nay, nay, praying to the God Jesus robot if this girl likes him back, and the robot is like, he says no. And then in this picture here, it looks like that same girl is prey asking God Jesus robot if that guy likes her, and the robot is like, yes! Which begs the question, how accurate is this fortune telling robot if he's giving different answers and different outcomes to the same people? To me, this feels like one of those low budget knockoff robot toys and they are just looking, you know, for a gimmick. But this was a real toy created by Bandai, a very well-known and incredibly successful toy company, stemming back all the way to the 70s and now to the present. So there you have it, six incredibly weird 80s toys. I hope you all enjoyed this list, and in the comments down below, please let me know if you had any of these toys featured today, and do you have any other weird toy nominations for future episodes? So thank you all so much for watching, and stay legendary. Bye -bye.